As a warm up for week seven's lab, let's take do a review of last week's picture frame picture frame practice. We're going to add the top and the bottom image. This is what it's looking like right now. And you can see here I've got my on my body tag, I've got the background, I've got the color, I've got the image, and I've got the repeat. The typical order of things in this row would be color image, repeat, and then position if needed. That's something to remember. Color, image, repeat, and position. So I'm going to add the top and the bottom images to this same body tag. And the way we'll do that is by putting a comma between them and then adding the image. So I'll add the image here. and I'm looking for the top. And then I don't want that to repeat, so I'll skip a space and say no repeat. And then I'll do a save and take a peek at what we have. Oof, everything disappeared. Why did that happen? Well, let's take a look. As the browser works to parse these background rules, it wants to see these things looking a lot alike. So I am going to add another background tag. So I'm going to list it separately here. I'm going to cut it. This background color does not need to be repeated three times. So I'll add the background color here and save. And now let's take a peek. Well, that's back, but the image is not showing. Why? Why is it not showing? Let's take a peek at why that's happening. The layering order is that whatever is above, whichever is on top, will be the topmost image. So I've got my mid on top. And not only that, it's repeating why all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. So it's just covering this right up. So let's trade places with them. And I'll put that one here, put a comma and separate it. I think now I have a there it is. So we have semicolons at the end of each rule. And I'll put some space between these. So as a reminder, the background color is more specific than the background. So it's overwriting it. Let's do a save and refresh. So now I just need to move this text down. And I'll do that in the container. It makes the most sense. Where is my container? I'll add some padding top, maybe uh, Seventy five pixels. Just guessing. And that looks pretty good. So let's add the bottom. So coming up here, now you know something about this. So we want the no repeat top image and the no repeat bottom image in front of the mid image because this one is repeating. We'll put the bottom image here with a comma. Where's the bottom? There it is. And we also want it to be no repeat and a comma and save and refresh. Hmm, can't see it. What's going on here? Oh, it is right now hanging out by default in the top left. So we need to give it a position. And we want to give it a position of left bottom. Save, refresh. 
and there it is. Now I might need to add a little padding underneath at the bottom of my tag, my container. So let's do that. Container. Top, left, right, padding, bottom. We're going to look at how to shorten this. And I'll also give that 75px. Save and refresh. And there that is. Now it's beautiful. So let's talk about shortening this. I've got my four padding notations here, my declarations. And I want you to think about these in the order of a clock. Top, right, bottom, and left. So let's comment these. Oops. And start a new tag, padding. Now the top was 75, the right was 75. I'm putting a space between these. The bottom is 75, and the left was 100. So let's see what that looks like. Save and refresh. All the same. So it's just better to put all of your padding, right, in one rule instead of creating four different rules. All right, let's begin week seven's lab.